All right, welcome back to the Hobby Bench. It's been a while, folks. I've been busy. Uh, and today, I wanted to talk about these Retibus radios that I've got, uh, specifically this Retibus MA1 here. I also have the GMRS Retibus RA87, and I'll do a video on these uh, at another time. I actually use um, one of those up here. This is just a spare down here. And... This is my newest purchase, this Retibus uh, MA1, and I really, really like this radio. It works fantastic on the local repeaters. Um, I love the, the fact that it's got dual receive, which is really, really nice. Uh, I was using a TYT 9000D VHF uh, radio, VHF only, but I liked the idea of a dual receive uh, UHF VHF radio so i got one of these and i have not been uh disappointed whatsoever and there's a bunch of videos obviously on youtube already about these radios but i wanted to maybe concentrate uh more specifically on, on a couple of particular issues that i was wondering about before i bought it and that is power which i mean you've seen some youtube videos already i'm sure looking around for power output but I wanted to see the FM deviation and how accurate it actually was so that's what we're going to do today so right now I've got I made up a uh, Retivus mic adapter to get into my bench here and that's plugged in RJ45 port on the side of the MA1 and then I've got the um, output the uh, 239 connector right now tied or antenna output tied to my HPN or HP8920, and let's see what we see. I don't have anything fired up yet, so let's go ahead and turn this on. And let's turn on our arbitrary waveform generator here. We'll let those warm up, and then we'll do a little bit of testing, and we'll see. And really what I'm concerned about is VHF, because usually the radios that seem to be coming out of uh, from overseas, uh, out of China, have some... I've seen a lot of them with really terrible harmonics on VHF. So we can look at that as well while we're at it, since we're going to be looking at it with a spectrum analyzer anyway. So let's set this up for what we want. And I'm just going to use a 1 kilohertz tone, and we're going to set the amplitude at 30 millivolts. I like using that. I've got the mic gain on this. Let's see where it's set at. Uh, let me look real quick. All right, modulation. There, my gain is set at five. All right, so let's go over to we'll go back to this modulation here and we'll leave it there for now. All right, so now we got this set up the way, the way we want it. Let's get this guy set up. So, uh, that repeater there, Pine Mountain, uh, it's a VHF repeater, and that is let's see, 146. Dot I think 025 is the transmit offset. So we're going to set this up. Let me back this away a little bit. Maybe you can see that screen a little better. Maybe not. I don't know. I'll leave it like that. All right. So let's set this up for 146.025 megahertz. And we are set for FM demodulation. And we're going to set the power on this to low so we don't blast. That's high. We're going to set the power to low so we don't blast the front end of the spectrum analyzer too much. All right. So now let's just look and see uh, what our power is first. So power on low, we're going to key up here. Got my handy little switch on the mic adapter. We're going to key up here. All right, we're keyed up, and we see for low power, we're getting about four and a half watts. All right, now we're going to set this to medium power, and we'll see what we get. We'll key up. Get my switch back in my hand, and we're about 18 watts. And then let's go to high power, and we'll see what... We see, and we're seeing about 
38 watts. All right. So it's supposed to be a 50 watt radio. I'm seeing about 40, we'll call it. I'm not really concerned about that. All right, so now let's look at FM deviation. So where will we set here? Let's go back in the menu. Modulation. So this modulation FM, and we have narrow FM and AM. So let's start with just FM which is going to be wideband and let's see what our FM deviation actually reads and we'll key it up oh we got to add a tone one kilohertz tone and we're looking at basically 4.9 we're looking at five kilohertz okay so now let's run that do the spectrum analyzer and see what it looks like so let's get this all set up. So we want to first set our peak amplitude so we're accurate. Let's key up. We're on, let's go back to low power up here. I don't want to blast the front end here. All right, so we're on low power on the MA1. All right, let me turn that off for a second. No tone. All right, so see, that's way, way too high. We're blasting the front end of this instrument. We need to get our peak down to this top radicle here according to the documentation of the HP 8920A otherwise we're overdriving the instrument so let's set our let's try 45 dB of attenuation that's almost perfect we're about 44 44 dB of attenuation we're going to call it that all right now we're going to set our span to 20 kilohertz wide all right now let's add our tone and let's see what we see. Oh, I forgot. I just unkeyed it. All right, so now we're keyed up. There's our tone. Okay, so now what we're concerned about is basically this peak here and everything within 20 dB of it, which is going to be basically from here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. All those little signal emissions you see there that's all part of our fm deviation we're looking at so using carson's rule 12 divided by 2 is 6 minus the 1 kilohertz tone equals 5 kilohertz and that's basically what we're seeing right there so the wideband fm for this is 5 kilohertz and it's pretty dang pretty dang accurate all right so now let's go to function again and let's set this to narrow FM. And let's see what we see. Let's just start with the spectrum analyzer this time. All right. Now we're going to first key with no tone. And we see where our signal is where we need to be peaked at. Now we're going to add our one kilohertz tone. Now you see the drastic difference there. Okay, so let's say that's our peaks. We're looking at basically 2, 4, 6, 8. That's all within 20 dB of the peak. So 8 divided by 2 equals 4 minus the 1 kilohertz tone is 3 kilohertz. But you see it's not quite to the edges of those two radicules there. So we're going to say it's less than 3 kilohertz. And there we go, 2.5 kilohertz. So yeah, it's pretty dang accurate. And of course, narrow band, it looks much more like a standard FM deviation should look. You've got your carrier has now been suppressed, and then all your side bands popping up. But yeah, so we're not quite 3 kilohertz uh, total deviation on the spectrum, but that makes sense because it's actually measuring at 2.5. So, yeah, Carson's rule is holding. It definitely looks like really good alignment as far as the FM deviation is concerned. Now, I haven't even looked in this radio to see if there's even any alignment points to be, to be uh, aligned. I have no idea. I just uh, mounted underneath the shelf there and wasn't really worried about it. Now that we're here... 
why don't we take a look at harmonics so we're going to change this from 20 kilohertz and let's say let's go uh 300 no 400 megahertz wide no 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 500 megahertz wide for our bandwidth and that way we catch the first harmonic which is going to be see at 146 so what is that so that's going to be somewhere around two uh let's see 142 280 and so 292 would be the first harmonic so let's see no tone and look and see what we see all right so there's our peak and basically nothing i see a little something right here but that is so far down in the mud i mean gosh would that even register on this let's see let's go to marker Let's go to next peak. So yeah, it's just showing the next peak is the front end of the instrument. And then here, yeah, it's not even registering that. Like, I mean, I wouldn't even count that. That is so far down in the mud. So very clean output on VHF for sure. Yep. Do we want to see what UHF looks like? I mean, I guess we can look. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's change our frequency here to another repeater that's actually UHF. All right, Columbus UHF, so the offset for that should be 447.100. So let's go back and look, and we'll start all over again. We'll look at 447.100, and then we're going to... We got our power set at low, so let's just key up and see what our power looks like on low. And we're showing 4 watts. And power on medium is 15 watts. And then power on high for UHF, I'm seeing third, 27, 27 watts. That's fine with me. All right, we can look at spectrum. I don't know really what we're going to see. I can't get really get that wide since this is UHF we're dealing with. So we're at 500 megahertz. So we're going to see if there's any, any spurious emissions within 250 megahertz each side with this measurement. That's fine. All right, there we go. Oh, that's also high power. We don't want high power. Even look, even with high power, it's not, there's nothing there. Even though we're overdriving the instrument, there was still nothing there. Okay, so there we go. It's not quite where it needs to be at. Let's go back to main and let's set this at 42 dB maybe. Nope, that's the wrong way. Let's go 44 dB. 45 dB. All right, there is going to be our most accurate measurement. So you see 250 megahertz on either side, and there's nothing there. All right, so let's change this span. Let's see if we can go with 800 megahertz. So 400 megahertz aside, absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So very clean there. Let's just throw our tone on. All right, tone is on. We're not going to hear it over here because of the bandwidth, but you see there's nothing popping up, even with it modulating. Absolutely nothing. So pretty, I'm pretty impressed with how clean this radio is. And, you know, you can see a lot of videos on the functionality of these and how to, um, how to uh, set them up for repeater use and all that. I, what I do is I use, I really don't use the face. I mean, you see it's fairly easy to get into the setup through the face, but I prefer using the um, software. And let me show you, I've got, because this is hard mounted back here right now, I've been playing with it uh, recently. I've got the USB cable run out of the back and I've got it hooked up to my mini PC over there. And I'm typically using the software to do any adjustments. So I'm going to go forward here for Retivas. Let me just show you the software. Super easy to use. 
So here is our, let me turn this light a little bit so I can glare at you. That might help. All right, there we go. So all we got to do is just go read from the radio. And you see it automatically starts to, and I had no issues with the software at all. I've read online where some people had some issues trying to get, maybe it was just COM port connectivity they were having issues with, but they couldn't have any success with the software at all. I find the software incredibly easy to use and worked right out of the gate for me. I also did both um, available firmware updates from um, Retivas' website. So the, the one that concerned me the most was the TX issue where there was a delay between when you keyed the mic and when it actually started to transmit. So I, I went ahead and did the firmware update right after I got it. All right, so read is successful. And see, there's my channel settings that I've done and how I've named each one. I've got um, VHF and UHF simplex channels also added there. And yeah, I mean, you've got pretty much anything you want to do in here. Uh, as far as there's our basic settings that you want to do are all right here and very easy to manipulate. I've got my mic audio, like you saw our mic gain set at five. Originally it was on auto and people were telling me I sounded muffled. So I set it at five and they say I sound loud and punchy. So I'm going to leave where it's at. And it looks fine on a spectrum analyzer, so no point in uh, changing it, I don't think, at this point. All right, well, I guess that's about it. I just thought I'd show you what I have seen and what I've experienced so far with this radio. I think it's a fantastic radio, and I like having more of one of my radios. So, you know, like I showed you earlier, I've got two of these RA87s. Uh, for GMRS use, and I'm gonna definitely buy a second one of these uh, RA. I'm sorry, MA1s. They are fantastic radios. I love the display. The black LCD is awesome. It's colorful. I really love all the little icons in there. Makes it really easy to see how you've got things configured. You can see on that Columbus UHF, I've got a tone configured. You can see the offset. Um, it's a great little display. And it's detachable, but of course, it's never going to get detached here where I've got it mounted, hard mounted there. So very close to my whatever HF radio that I'm currently in use. Um, well, I'll tell you what, one last thing we could try. Oh, I, don't, I can't do that. I was going to do a call out, but I'm hooked up to the 8920 right now. All right, well, so I guess we'll just call it quits there. Um, if you're looking for a UHF, VHF radio, mobile, uh, these are fantastic radios from my experience so far. It's been running probably almost nonstop about 16 hours a day for the last week, and it's been terrific. So, all right, until next time, guys, 73s.